fast start, test complete, modulate projects and project suites. So in the last module, when we looked at creating our first keyword tests, we touched on the hierarchy of our test projects and the way in which a suite and a project and a test and test steps all link together. And there is this distinct hierarchy with four levels to it. And the top of that hierarchy is your project suite. And a project suite can contain one or more projects. So in this instance, Project Suite Calc Plus contains a project called Calc API, another project called Calc Desktop, Calc Mobile, Calc Web. So one project suite contains four projects. If we drill down into the projects, we'll then see that a project can contain one or more tests, whether they're keyword tests, test one, two, and three in this instance, or advanced scripted tests which might be contained in unit one in this particular example. So one project, many tests. Each test then, if we go down a level further, might contain one or more test steps. So in test two, we've got four test steps. Each of those test steps carrying out a particular action or checkpoint against an object in your application. So many test steps make a test case, many test cases make a test project, and many test projects make a project suite. When we open these different levels in the hierarchy in the workspace, for example, double click on project suite, it opens a project suite workspace, we'll see in there a list of the projects. We can enable or disable those projects. And in doing so, when we run a project suite, we run all of the enabled projects listed here. So if I run the project suite, it'll run Calc Web Project, followed by Calc Mobile, followed by Calc API. Those projects, if we double click on a project node here, for example, and open that in the workspace, that project is made up of a number of different tests, keyword or scripted. In a similar vein, we can enable or disable particular folders or tests within the project. So if I run the project, in this instance, that project will execute all of the enabled or checked folders and tests listed in the project workspace. If we drill down and look at a particular test within the project, and one way to do that is to right click on the test and select jump to test, opens the test in the workspace for us. We can in the test itself enable and disable various test steps. So you can right click on a test step and you can do enable or disable operation. So this one is disabled at the moment and I can re-enable it or I can multi-select various test steps, right click on those and I can disable those operations. Then when we run the test, the test itself will only run the enabled operations. And likewise, if we run the project and the project contains the test case, when you run the project, it will only run the enabled test steps. Where you'll find the real power and flexibility of test complete coming into its own is this concept of building out the tests within the project. Because it's here that we can drag and drop tests to build out our projects and we can group them into folders. So if I wanted to start from scratch, I could delete all of the test items in here and note this only deletes the items from the project workspace it does not delete the tests themselves so remove those elements start with a clean project and from here I have my tests within my project and I can drag and drop those on to my test work test project workspace so that when I run the project it runs the items or the tests that are listed within the project so in this instance dragging on these three tests 
I run the project, it will run test one, followed by test two, followed by test three. I can disable one of those tests, run the project, and it will run test one and run test three. I can right click on particular items in here and do run focused item. And I can also use the grouping capability on the menu bar here to group tests and drag and drop them into organize them in a folder structure. The power comes from being able to reuse these tests. So if you create your tests in a nice modular fashion, so we might have test one here, which is start calc. We might have test two, which is stop calc. And we might have test three, which is do calc emulation. Create a folder. And then in here we can drag in start calc. We can drag in the do calculation, which happens after we've done start calc. And then we can drag in stop calc. And note that we're getting the hierarchy of these tests correct because there's no point in doing the calculation itself unless we've started calc. And we might want to indent the stop calc because there's no point in stopping calc again unless you've started the calc application. Now, if you remember, we parameterized one of these tests. In fact, this test here we parameterized so that we could feed in a value at start time. And if we right click and do jump to test, we can see the parameter is used at this point here where we use the keys operation. And the parameter is defined here. So we've got a keys operation which simulates pressing on the keys and we've got calc num1 as a parameter and we could put in here 111 plus 222 equals and that means that parameter will be used at this point here in the test and because we've parameterized it each time we drag that test into our project we can update and modify the parameter values. So I could, it has a default value which we just set, but now I'm changing it at the project level. So that will do one calculation. And if we were to copy and paste that set of tests again, we could repeat exactly the same tests, start calc, do calc, stop calc. But this time round we could change the parameters. So instead of doing this sum, we could do a slightly different sum. And what we've been clever to do here is implement the concept of test case reuse. So we wrote the do count test once, we parameterized it, and then we can reuse it at the project level with different parameters each time we run it. Just a couple of other concepts to mention here whilst we're on the project workspace and those are the columns at the top here we have the ability to set the count so the number of times we execute a particular step so if we wanted to start calc and start three instances of it we could increment the count to three we have a timeout so this is the time test complete waits for this particular test to complete and that's in seconds we have the action to carry out if uh, there is an error. So if we're at the test item level and there's an error, then we'll stop. Or we could do if, uh, if an error, if we hit an error in the test, then stop the project as opposed to stop the test item. Or we could ignore any errors whatsoever and just carry on. Same concept on hitting an exception. So if your application throws an exception during the test, then we can choose whether we stop the test item, stop the whole project, or just try to continue. The last column we've already seen really, and this is where we set the parameter if the test has uh, any parameters defined for it. Final column in here is our free format text description column. 
and you can put some comments and remarks in here to explain what this particular test does within this project context. And that in a nutshell is the concepts of project suites and projects and the hierarchy as that relates to tests and test steps within the test cases. In the next module we'll look at checkpoints and stores in more detail and see how we can use those to compare expected and actual results as the test executes.